So, if you've spent much time watching movies, reading comics, or, you know, talking to people, you probably know about Tony Stark, also known as the Iron Man, a genius in a suit of armor who uses his brilliant technology to fight people. And I've been thinking a lot about him lately, so today, I want to spend some time looking at Tony and the concept of intelligence, and hopefully learn a little bit more about what makes Tony so special. Welcome to Singularity. Meet Tony Stark, son of Howard and Maria Stark, and in his words, a genius billionaire playboy from Interest. Tony was your average super genius who graduated from MIT at the age of 15, inherited a weapons enterprise from his dead father, and used said weapons enterprise to become one of the richest men in the world. Okay, so nothing about Tony is necessarily average, but honestly, what makes this guy so special, even among superheroes? I mean, this is comics. Super geniuses are literally everywhere. Just look at the Avengers, Tony's home team. They've got Black Panther, Hank Pym, Bruce Banner, Stephen Strange, all of whom are geniuses. Fantastic Four have Reed Richards. His arch nemesis is Victor Von Doom, both super geniuses. Hop over to the X-Men, you get Hank McCoy and Charles Xavier, again, both geniuses. Peter Parker, Amadeus Cho, freaking Modoc, we could go on and on. And with all of these geniuses, it really starts to feel like the only thing setting Tony apart is his shiny suit. So let's dive in and find out how smart Tony really is. Look, no one can deny that Tony's a genius. He is built dozens if not hundreds of different high-tech suits of armor that can do anything from deep sea exploration, space travel, fighting on par with the gods, and much more. He's designed AIs that dwarf any technology we have. One time, Tony grew a tumor that was smarter than most of the human race. That's not a joke. But as we start trying to look into intelligence, we're going to quickly run into a problem. How do we define it? And this is a problem that psychologists have been struggling with for a while. The measure of intelligence that most of us are probably familiar with is the IQ test, or intelligence quotient. The test is fairly simple. You answer a series of questions covering logical reasoning, basic arithmetic, pattern recognition, all that stuff. You get a number based on your score, which is called your mental age. You divide your mental age by your actual age, multiply the result by 100, and boom, you have your IQ. Easy peasy. So what's Tony's IQ? Well, while Marvel has never given us an official answer to that, the High IQ Society, a group that keeps records on the IQs of extremely intelligent individuals, theorizes that Tony is somewhere around 270. Which is kind of ridiculous. The average IQ is 100, with 140 or more being considered genius level. 270 is almost twice that. It is entirely unheard of for someone to have an IQ that high. Elon Musk is 155. Albert Einstein's IQ is 160. Alan Turing, the creator of the modern supercomputer, had an IQ of 185. And Tony dwarfs that, beating him by almost 100 points. In fact, the highest IQ ever recorded belonged to a woman named Marilyn Voss Savant, who had an IQ of 228. And Tony is still 40 points above that. So Tony having 270 really doesn't tell us much outside that he is ridiculously smarter than anyone we could possibly compare him to. But what is the IQ test? What does it actually measure? Well, the IQ test is based on theories by Alfred Binet that posit the true measure of intelligence as being how easily you can pick out patterns. Binet was a French psychologist and he was one of the first intelligence theorists. He designed a very early version of the IQ test that focused more than anything else on logic and patterns. His idea was the most intelligent people are the people who can pick out even subtle patterns, even a pattern of every 
hundredth number increasing by three in a random string of numbers. If you can pick out these subtle patterns, that shows your intelligence. The problem is, Binet's theory is still really vague. And the IQ test that is built on it is also really vague. I mean, sure, the IQ test is the most widely used test of intelligence, but how do we know that it actually measures intelligence accurately? This is a concept, by the way, called construct validity. The question of, how do we know that a test measures what it's supposed to test? How do we know that the IQ test measures intelligence? Well, for that matter, how do we even know what intelligence is? We don't. No one does. Don't get me wrong, we have a lot of theories, but that's all they are theories. For instance, this guy, Raymond Cattell, one of the most well-known intelligence theorists, has actually theorized two different types of intelligence. Fluid intelligence, which is how we use logic to solve problems, and crystallized intelligence, which is facts and statistics that we memorize. Think of it this way. If you have a puzzle game that gives you certain objects that do certain things, and then you have to solve a puzzle using those objects and a set of rules, that uses fluid intelligence. You're having to use logic. This tool accomplishes this purpose, therefore you can use it in this way. You have to use logic and the tools around you to make a difference. Meanwhile, trivia games like Jeopardy test your crystallized intelligence. What year did Napoleon lose the Battle of Waterloo? What is the atomic number of Rutherfordium? These are facts that you have to memorize. So Cattell had these two different types of intelligence. But to add on to that, Cattell actually theorized a third, higher form of intelligence that involved using fluid and crystallized intelligence together, using all of these facts that you had memorized, your crystallized intelligence, and applying them in the right places, your fluid intelligence. And a later psychologist, John Carroll, built upon this idea and came up with the three stratum theory, a theory that involves three levels of intelligence that become more important and more complex as you go. And here you might be starting to see our problem. Those are two theorists between them with six different types of intelligence. Do you see the issue we're gonna have trying to define intelligence? There are so many different people who have had so many different theories and different types of intelligence that finding a concrete definition is virtually impossible. Not to mention that we also have to factor in perception, sensation, long-term and short-term memory, mechanical intelligence, the ability to envision how things work, emotional intelligence, how well you empathize with people, creativity, and we just end up hitting a dead end. There are so many factors to consider that there's no way to actually define it in a way that fits everyone's definition, in a way that pleases every theorist. And what's more is, conveniently, or frustratingly, depending on how you view it, Tony excels in every single area. Well, except for emotional intelligence, he's kind of a narcissist. But every other area, Tony has an amazing memory. He's a mechanical genius. He is a savant for logical reasoning. No matter what definition we plan to use, Tony is still going to be brilliant. So let's ditch definitions. Let's look at it in a completely different way. Instead of trying to find a definition for what constitutes being intelligent, let's work backwards. Find common traits that all intelligent people share, or at least that most intelligent people share. And then by comparing Tony against that list of traits, we can at least get a ballpark estimate. So I spent some time looking, reading through papers by Binet, Cattell, and Carroll, scanning articles from everyone from Psychology Today to Encyclopedia Britannica, and I came up with this. Four qualities shared by most, if not all, highly intelligent people. One, the ability to adapt to new situations. Two, the ability to understand and handle abstract concepts. Three, the ability to learn from experience. And four, the ability to manipulate the environment around us. We'll use these four criteria to measure how smart Tony is, and surprise, surprise, really smart. In fact, 
we can find Tony excelling in all four of these categories in one of his first and most famous acts as Iron Man, the construction of the Mark I armor. One, he is thrown into a new and unsure situation, trapped in a cave with a box of scraps, as Obadiah put it. And immediately, Tony starts working towards a way of escaping, a way that no one had ever thought about before. And we see this time and time again. Every time Tony is faced with a new situation, he comes up with a new armor, perfectly adapted towards this situation. Hulk is rampaging through the streets of New York. Tony adapts and builds the Hulkbuster armor. Tony needs to be able to explore deep undersea. He adapts and builds an armor that can go deep undersea and handle that pressure. Second, can Tony handle abstract concepts? For sure. Think about the arc reactor, the very thing keeping him alive and powering all of his suits. That's an abstract concept for sure, and Tony just figured it out. Number three, he certainly didn't get the armor perfect on his first try either. He has been learning from his experiences, learning from his mistakes, and making the armor better and better every time. We have so many improved models of his armor that we see not only in the movies, but in the comics as well. Of course, Tony learns from his experience. And finally, number four, the ability to manipulate the environment around us. That's Tony's specialty. I mean, this is a man who is confronted with Uru, space metal that can superpower magic that the forged dwarves use to create weapons of mass destruction that can control the weather. And Tony's first response was, I'm gonna make a suit of armor out of that and then fight a god. Any way we slice it, Tony's an absolute genius. There's just no way around it. But that still leaves us with the original question. What makes Tony different from all of the other geniuses? A lot, actually. And it goes back to Cattell's theory of fluid intelligence. If you'll remember, fluid intelligence is using logic and using our tools to solve problems, even if we don't know the solution, coming up with one. Think about this for a second. Reed Richards is a genius, almost always portrayed as being the smartest man in the Marvel Universe, much smarter than Tony, actually. But what makes Reed a superhero? It's his superpower, his ability to stretch and morph his body, change it into whatever he wants. Bruce Banner is a genius, but by and large, he doesn't use his brain to fight crime. He turns into the Hulk and uses his muscles. T'Challa is brilliant, but it's easy to stand for justice when you're also standing on top of the world's biggest stash of miracle metal. But Tony? Tony saw a world filled with crime and evil and decided to do something about it. He saw the injustice in the world and he decided to build a suit of armor, a fitting symbol, to protect himself while he devoted everything he had to protecting the world. Tony had the tools, he just needed to use them, and he found a way to use them. Tony is a genius, just like a million other geniuses in Marvel and in DC. But what makes him a hero unlike any other is the fact that he uses his genius to stand up against the forces of evil. No powers, no magic, no nation of soldiers backing his every move. And that's what separates Tony from every other genius in Marvel. It's not about what he has. It's about what he doesn't. This is Singularity. And remember to stay curious. And we're back with another end card. Uh, I know it's been a really long time since I've posted a video. There's been a lot going on in my life, but I'm ready to get back to it. And I think that this was pretty good video all things considered hopefully i'll be able to put out some content more regularly soon but uh for now enjoy this look at iron man and the concept of intelligence i did want to real quick repeat something that should have shown up earlier in the video but it bears repeating now i understand that nothing we talked about was specific to iron man i just wanted to use tony as like a springboard to talk about the concept of intelligence because it's a really cool talking point that a lot of people kind of ignore. Um, 
And I also know that there are a lot of other places we could have gone. We could have gone a lot more in depth into intelligence and what it is. But hey, there are links in the description and hopefully it'll prompt some of you guys to do more research and look into it and find more theories that you think are interesting. Um, that's always been the goal of this channel is to, um, is to uh, inspire people to do more research and learn more about topics that they might not know about. So I know this isn't the perfect video, but it's one that I'm really proud of. And I think that it'll be very useful in getting people to learn more about the world of psychology and specifically the world of intelligence theorists, because it is a wild, lawless wasteland. Anyway, see you guys in the next video.